Had it, partners. Hey, you can tell I still got my county fair buzz going on, right? Yeah, whenever the fair comes around, I'll put on my cowboy shirt. You know, I'd like to name one of my kids Ace. If Kendra would have been a boy, she was born in Las Vegas, Nevada, her name would have been Ace. Anyway, county fair time comes on, I put on my cowboy shirt, my cowboy hat, and I get plum ignorant. I-G-N-E-R-N-T ignorant. Anyway, you can tell this isn't going to be one of my regular boring episodes. This one is going to be crazy. So, before I get real crazy here, I want to take care of a couple of things. First, the housekeeping. Subscribe. Like. Metric hater. Hang in there. There's just one of you. You're about extinct. You gotta keep going, dude. You gotta keep going. Next, you know, there's some things that we forget about in everyday life, like, and take for granted. And I want to talk about one of them right now. Yeah, for me, that one person that I take for granted is my first aid kit right there. Um, it's not really a person... At least I don't think it is. It doesn't answer me when I talk to it. But I like it better than most people. Alright, so why is the first aid kit my favorite person that I take for granted? Well, it's pretty simple. When I went to pick up my guitar at the county fair, this one right here, you've seen it in episodes. You're going to see it again today because we're going to be doing a little bit of fix up on this before it gets sent off to Bristol which is somewhere across the Atlantic Ocean I think that guy in that loud motorcycle is going there right now but anyway when I went there to pick this up I injured myself and this is almost seems like an annual injury because when I go there and I pick up all my ribbons look at that best of this best of that best of everything see and I didn't buy these at a yard sale. Yeah, I know some of y'all buy trophies at yard sales, but if you're going to do that and pretend it was you, then don't buy the second, third place trophy, dude. Buy the first place trophy. Come on, use your head, right? But anyway, that says my name. You can't spell it. Neither can I. Don't feel bad. But these are actually rib blah, blah, ribbons I won, which necessitated me using the first aid kit. So, we're going to go to the bench, and I'm going to make a stop at the first aid kit and get some of that ointment that's going to make my back feel better. Uh, almost, I hope it feels almost as good as my ego, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. I know some of y'all watch what's going on behind me for signals of the Illuminati, like that owl up there. I bet you didn't see that. Anyway, you see this hat? Did you look close? Do you think these are feathers right here? Right there, you think those are feathers? They're not feathers. They are balloons picked off the floor of a used Bob Log the Third concert. That's right. Okay, let's hit the bench. Do not covet my cowboy hat. All right, we're good to go. We got Wild Billy James going on in the background. And uh, one more time, Lisa from New York uh, we did an episode with her called Long Distance Lisa where she called in one time with some really good questions when my channel was first starting out. I'll give you a link to that right up there right about now. But um, the question again is how do we get the strings? I'm trying to get this view set up here. We're going to change some things. How do we get the tailpiece holes, the nut grooves, and everything lined up so there's the right amount of spacing between the strings um, and we're going to work on a four string here so i'm going to move the camera now over the top of the neck and kind of show you what i've got going on here let's move up one more time here now if you look right here i've got a piece of this white tape and this white tape is the best for this because you can mark on it you can see it where the blue tape doesn't do so well, the marks tend to hide. So I've got a piece of tape here. I'm going to put this bone bridge on it. I've got it marked out. I think I'm standing in the way of my light and the camera, but you can see I got the end of it marked off. 
and I've taken a pencil and I'm going to cut this off on the scroll saw and grind this down on my grinder and get it where it's just about right. Then what I'm going to do is when I glue this on, I'm going to know where my grooves for the strings in the knot go because I've marked this off. Now, how have I done that? Well, I figured out that my ruler is underneath the camera. There we go. What I figured out is on my guitars with the best spacing, it's five millimeters from the edge of the neck to the first string. Same thing over there. Can you see that? You know what? I still got that one metric hater on my last video. Good for you, Padna. Anyway, between there and there is five on each side. And then when I move this over, I can do seven or eight here, depending on if there's a little variance here. But it's seven to the first string, seven to the next string, and then seven to the next string. So what I've done is taken, cut a piece of, of uh, neck board cut off at a 45, and I've put those spots in there. I'm going to drill a hole right here. And then I can take this, when I put that piece of tape on there, line it up with the neck in one, two, three, four. Um, that's how I did that. This is going to come in handy all the way through. Now again, I've taken this tape, this white painter's tape, and put some at the very last fret. And then I can put this here, like so, and I can make my marks again right on the tape that's right over the fret and then finally let me move this back a little bit more i have taped off let's get the light over here i have taped off the top of the bridge the floating bridge that's what's underneath there i still got some adjustment to do but i'm not going to mark these right now uh, but this also comes in handy when you're laying out your tailpiece if you can put your marks there, there, and then slide it up, and there, and there. The one thing I would caution you is coming off that edge, five millimeters, and then using the tension pins I use, that's a little bit shaky because there's not that much wood left there. Um, so what you end up doing is you come in a tad more because you don't want to split this out when you're driving that tension pin. Those tension pins need to be tied in there. But what that will do ultimately is it's going to create Instead of a straight pull to this line, you're going to end up with these bowed back a little bit. The end result of that is you might have a little bit of wear in here in the groove over a while. Uh, but that's the best I can do. Again, this is going to come in really handy. Let me put this one away. I've got another guitar. Yeah, it's the one that won all them ribbons that caused me to have to use the first aid kit. Remember that from the beginning of the show? Yeah, that one. We're going to get it on the bench, and I'm going to show you. I've got a lot of that laid out, and we're going to wrap that guitar up and get it in the uh, mail and get it over to um, England. That's where it's going. England, I forget. All right, there it is. Remember that one? Let's run down it. Um, there you go. Ain't that pretty? Apparently the judges and everybody at the fair thought so. Anyway, let, let me get my camera set up over, first off, we'll do the knot right there. Um, remember this handy tool? I just laid it on there like so. I come around this way where you could see it. But I've got the knot height set and I've got the grooves in it. One, two, three, four. And remember that. I came off five millimeters off the edge each side there. Now, when the strings come out of the tuners, tuners are on this one. Um, when I string this up, this is going to be my first reference point right here. So let's move this back a little bit. I'm actually doing good about getting big, big, long chunks of the episode out of the way so I don't have to edit so much. But now we're down to the end fret. So I'm going to put this here like this, make sure it lines up and put a mark right there on each one of those. Now, I really don't want to 
to put grooves in that or anything. I just want those marks there. Those are going to be reference points for me. And then finally, let's get this where I don't mess it up. There we go. You'll notice that I have some tape here, some of that white tape on the bridge. Um, I'm actually going to find out where the strings are going to go on here, cut the grooves in, and then finally, the very last thing I'm going to do is figure out where my string height is on here. But we're going to go ahead and put a string on here, and then we're going to string it up to here, run it to here, and then we're going to figure out where we need to cut our grooves in this bridge, and that will be done by where the string is in the knot and where it crosses this will give us our mark here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give away the farm here. I use Ernie Ball regular slinky strings. I use the top heaviest four strings, 46, 36, 26, 17. Anybody that needs a bunch of 13s and 10s, I got a ton of them because those come out of here. You want to remember that if you're using a 46 size string, you can't have these single board pine necks because they're going to bow. These strings are starting to get heavy here and they will pop loose. But anyway, let me get these out of here one more time. 46 is my thumper string and top four strings down to 17. Almost forgot the tail piece on this one. If you look at it, my two outside strings, they're just a tad in from where those grooves are again because that's not much space to put there but my two center ones are okay um, so the tension is going to come this way from the outside strings but these are okay something I want to tell you is when you're using these tail pieces like this we got holes in the in the uh, uh, tension pins are mounted up in there when you pull these in you want to make sure they're tight right away I've actually strung one up and had it hung up halfway and then that string all of a sudden pulls the rest of the way through and it made a mess but I got the top string on the 46 and I'm going to run it down to the tuner and get it pretty close and then I'll show you what we're going to do okay do not be without one of those and then also you want to throw your tuner on and get it fairly close to where you're going to be. And I'm not going to tell you my secret tuning. That sounds a lot like a G, doesn't it? So I'm really close right there with that tuning. And um, so my string tension is about right. Now, this is not rocket science. Let me get the light over here where we can see that and maybe scoot this back a little bit but I've got the string on here it's in the knot up here in the nut groove where it's supposed to be and what I'm going to do is I am just going to put my tension down my finger now the thinner the sharpie the better for this you don't want to use a big thick one one of the micro ones and, uh, is actually better but I'm going to put the string right over that mark that I put there, right over it. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a mark here and here. You see, I did that on both sides of the string. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you a little bit. Here, let me get the camera to focus. It ain't going to do it. Oh, well. Maybe next time I'll buy a $20 camera. Zoom back out. All right, a little bit more. Thanks for bearing with me. But anyway, now all I have to do is pull this string back and take my flat saw, fine tooth flat saw, and I just pull this back like so, make sure I'm sitting right in the middle of that groove and make my mark right there like so come on there we go that's going to drop right down in there in between there I look it's all lined up I'm just going to do that with the rest of the strings get my mark then I'll pull the tape off I've got some grinding to do and sanding on the bottom of this I also have I got a, a blue tape right there I have to notch this California the sea off to California to get this to sit right this floating bridge um, 
the screw on it. But anyway, I'm just going to put the rest of these on, get it wrapped up, and I'll show you what it looks like. Almost forgot, got a set of needle files here. Now what I use first is this triangular file. So I put that little notch in there with fine tooth flat cut saw. But when I pull that string out, I'm gonna take this triangular saw and put where I got that groove. And I'm just gonna count the number of strokes I give each one. And then on these bigger strings, I've mentioned this in an episode before, you start getting these big strings down a groove that's triangular the the thickness of the string doesn't fit all the way down in the V notch it's kind of like look at these scissors it's like the string is sitting down in here but there's a little gap because the string is rounded and that's going to give you spring string buds so watch out for that you want to pick out one of your files that's like flat like this so you can get that bottom edge when you're finally down there to get the V out of it and it sits down real nice just like that so I'll get the rest of this strung up and we'll have another look All right, there we go, one, two, three, four. I can loosen the strings up now, pull them off to the side, pull the tape off once I've marked those and notch them down, and then go to work on getting the bridge height right, and finally get this off to Bristol, England. Hey, Husky Tones, how y'all doing? There, guys, wasn't that ignorant? Yeah, real ignorant. Do you really think I run around dressed like that? No, I got nice clothes. I got my bibs and I got my collection of Bob Log the third shirt. So I'm always good to go fashion wise. But anyway, the moral of the story here is a little piece of wood in about 15 seconds, you've got a template. And this template right here will help you mark off where the strings go on your knot, uh, give you a marking spot on your frets to see with a piece of tape where the strings are going to line up on the tailpiece when you're laying out the tailpiece and as well as the bridge so use one of these once again I want to thank my friend Lisa out in New York I always love your questions because they give me really practical episodes Wild Billy James I'm still waiting for you to come out with something new the wild man out of Uruguay Wild Billy James I'll give you a link below Yeah, this thing actually plays and I'm going to finish up now by letting you in on a little secret. My friend John Sawyer uh, sent me this framework. This little uh, box is actually a kit. Um, well, it won the fair at the ribbon. Uh, I don't want to tell you. And then he also sent me, John Sawyer sent me this. A mason jar amp, really. I feel right at home now. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link to John and his stuff below. Check him out. And uh, let's close out with some of the most terrible music you ever heard. I'll see you next time.